So you want to book someone for a shower, what you do is once someone's talking with the their service you phone up will give you a constant daily bowing. It's one number you phone which will select brilliant. So you say someone says Tuesday day bowing with the show, you say fine, you phone up then all the record company, you ask them nicely, they say no, you might always go, you go, there you go, no, you can't do it. And that's your job. You know, and if you said yes, you're gonna arrange it. So it's another you know, application or that sort of thing. Um, so then I stayed on, I, I researched a couple of documentaries, which I thought were very boring. I don't like doing documentaries. Well, one, it was with a company with disabled people, right? So three of my best friends had come out in wheelchairs. And uh, they, really, yeah, they were quite good fun, but I mean, the subject matter was very serious. You know, one was about people with accidents and having a compensation act. It wasn't a very really interesting documentary. It didn't wind up a good piece of TV. And I'm pretty much opposed to documentaries like that now. Because I just think, why bother? It doesn't help the person. All you're doing is you're going back and you're waking up the old feelings. So if someone's had a horrible experience in court, and you're making a documentary about what a horrible time people have in court, you're going back and you're making a living for a game, you know, why? For the entertainment of viewers. So I don't like that sort of thing. Uh, but I did a kid show, it was a good one called Fat Tricks. And once again, it was a dreadful program, I had a great time making it. I had a guy go to the country very schools, picking teams, and, uh, and then with this kind of big knockout competition, which would be like, have you seen Gary Crowley's show at the moment, the super track, the super teams? No. Yeah. Well, it's a bit like that, but without, it wasn't there and it was much fun to watch. And that was a good time, it was a nice one. Then I did, uh, the Edinburgh Festival, the Edinburgh Festival. Then I did Guardian Lectures with Channel 4, which were film shows. I met Clint Eastwood. Really? Oh, I shook his hand, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Clint. And uh, I met Sean Connery, David Lynch, the director. That was coming. Uh, no interest. That was it. I didn't meet Mel Brooks, we had one bowl in there like that. So they were my favourite shows to work on. And then the guy who I work with now, my partner, Alan Mark, he was working with the company, I had never met him. He'd He'd been trying to persuade his company worked and they used to buy American quiz shows and they to buy their rights to Soul Train. He said, look, Soul music is really taken off in this country, you should do a show about it. And no one would listen to him. And eventually he got some tapes up and persuaded it, even though he never got credit for this. And uh, they did Soul Train. And I got a job on Soul Train. Um, and while we were doing Soul Train, the guy, this is when I first thought maybe I could be a presenter, or maybe I would want to do it. I've been offered a kid show that I worked on. I said no, because I was never really crazy about being a presenter. And uh, this Soul Train program, they, the, the guy that he actually sells some of the worst quiz shows you've seen on TV and all that American crap you get on TV, yeah. that's the man responsible. Uh, he bought us Game for a Laugh, he bought us All-Star okay. Secrets, he bought us Catchways, he bought us Crosswit. Rubbish. But we used to do them in the office. To sell the games TV companies to do in the office, so I used to host them somehow. So, and now, please welcome all the way from Birmingham, Aaron Mark. And he kind of went, well, tell me a bit about yourself, Alan. And we just messed around the office. So I kind of got, you know, that was good fun. Can I confess it in one point? Thank you. Yeah, um, yeah, I didn't realise, I just realised that was happening because Phil Simon's the one who's talking about television. Um, so I worked there, and then the way we came up with this show is we got, we were beginning to get bored with being, you know, you work for four or five years and you know you can do a lot of things, you're not given the chance to do, and you get a bit frustrated that the shows you're being offered aren't really what you want to do. Like, you know, there's not a lot open to you. If you're interested in doing young, fun things, you, to write comedy, we can write comedy, we don't know what to do there. And most shows take themselves too seriously, I always thought. The music shows, really, once you've done one or two, you get bored with them. They're good. When you first start working, the greatest show on earth, if you like music, you get free records, you get to meet the bands, and it's not the most demanding job in the world, so I thought it was great. But then, after a while, you realise that there's no challenge involved. You know, we went back to the second season of Soul Channel, there's no challenge, it was a solid song. You know, because you know the people, and you've got the same people offering the same bad acts you don't want to say no to. You're testing the people with good acts who are saying no to you, you know, so it's just boring. So in between, we, I knew there was some money that was not spent in the budget. It was about 12 grand, I think. So I said, why don't we come on and I'll do the show, get the money out of the budget, do nothing with it. And then we come back to solid sun next year. It just means we have a nice summer, you know, a nice Christmas. We don't have to work. So I said, no. Oh. So um, the guy said, no, if John comes to Channel 4, he's a pretty short-sighted person. And in general, not because he turned us down. I don't think because of that, but in general, I don't think he liked his programming ideas. And um, so we then took a commission editor for Light Entertainment, which was the best movie ever made. And now he gave us the show all summer we weren't seen as a kid show. If we'd have been seen as a kid show, we wouldn't have got anywhere near the press or the attention we got. Um, because it would have looked, in a way, if you were doing this show at 5 o'clock at night, no one would have noticed. They would have thought, well, it's like the truth. But as you're doing it late at night, it's like a serious show. People say, oh, that's strange, they're not taking it seriously anymore. So he gave us some development money, which is a wonderful place. I love the show. <laughs> <laughs> they give you money and you have to turn up with a pile of paper and give you like an essay. It's great. <laughs> so, so we went off and we bought ourselves lots of lunches and we got a little office set up and we met lots of people. We did work with these really hard and we came up with these ideas. And Channel 4 were great, they really helped us do it all. And we said, look, I might have a go at it, but we wanted to find a presenter. And we couldn't find a presenter we liked. We liked our ideas. So in the end, I went out having a go. We did various the studio because we know the people, they gave us some free time. And we went in and did some of the worst, I had to taste those challenges, some of the worst things you've ever seen in your life. Like me, you know, stuck in my brain. Well, um, 
Um, <laughs> and now, uh, and now we have the, and then gradually, you know, it's just a matter of anything's practice. If anyone wants to be a presenter, what they should do, the best thing to do, the hardest thing I found is be talking out loud in front of other people. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing to talk in front of other people. It's embarrassing to go out and say, I want to be a presenter. You know, it shouldn't be that you do feel embarrassed because you're pushing yourself forward and you're saying, you're sort of exposing part of your ego. And there's nothing wrong with that part of you, it's just an embarrassing thing to admit to, isn't it? Mm. So, I would let anyone who's who's had a practice at home in front of a mirror, as much as possible, in front of your parents or anyone, you know, that's what I did. Just go home and say, I'm on my way. And now, well, I'm Maureen Ross, and I'm Maureen today. And, um, so I had a go, we did a pilot last March, and we had on the pilot, we had Cynthia Payne, we had an African anthropologist who was talking about this bizarre tribe that practiced full penis circumcision. <laughs> kind of mouth, you know, eye-watering, not mouth-watering, eye-watering stuff. Uh, and we had um, Fanny Cradder, who was mad as a hatter. <laughs> she was a bit unwelcome, so I had her back on the show, because she just kept telling me off. Don't be so rude. Don't be so cheeky. Oh, I'm so funny. You know, so <laughs> she was really funny. She's like, she, her face is like a mask. You know, it's like someone's putting the lipstick on the way and the eye makeup. <laughs> Johnny couldn't be with me. Uh, we had music from well, one of the three degrees singing with our band, Nick Peters. It's a great band, Nick Peters. Um, so we did the pilot and they said, yeah, we quite like it. We just, you know, so in a way they called our bluff. And we've just been riding on it since then. But then they said, that was through our company, Channel X. We formed the company as a joke, you know. We used to have these little playing cards. It was a, t- a game I got from a young child called Channel X Be A TV Tycoon. We, thought, we, never knew, we never got the rules, but we just said that was it. So we called ourselves Channel X and nicked these cards out of an old TV with an aerial flash in. And then they gave us a series and we did a budget. So then this is your idea? No, well, the show is, yeah. This office is on ours, what they said was they said, what the series cost on half a million, which is not bad by TV terms, about 45 a show. Um, and it costs you 10 grand for the studio, you know, and you've got all those things to pay, and then what you do is you spread it out back over the, the pre production period, and you've got all the wages for everyone working on it, so you then spread that into each show. So it's not that bad, man. Um, but they said, well, that's a lot of money, and you're a couple of credits, so we're not going to trust you with all that money. So you have to do it as a co-production, you, you either have to do it with another company, totally, or as a co-production. No, there's no way we do it for another company, because the reason why we started was to have some control over our own work, and to actually earn some of the profits from it. So we said, fine, so we do it as a 50-50 co-production deal with this company, the calendar company. We've just produced, it's actually a film production, and we've just done this new film by Peter Greenway, which should be quite good. We had him on as a guest that night, just to find out. And, uh, really kind of and he's a really nice guy, and he actually really cares about the show. But he can't do the second series, so he can't produce it. He's, done it. he's working in America as a producer. He's not a producer, so we'll still do it for his company, but we'll get another producer. Um, no, none that I haven't really got on with this. A lot I don't think I handled very well. Did you see this Friday show? What do you think of it? It was okay. I'm not too sure about the plates, but I thought this was the weekly show, yeah. I thought it was the weekly show. I mean, I just felt with the interviews, there was nothing wrong with them, but the first guest, I think she was very tired. It just wasn't sparky, was yeah, it? It was no. kind of like, yeah. I would have off if I was watching. The second guest was an interesting guest, but really she's more suited to Pamela Armstrong or Mavis Nicholson. She was dead nervous. So that was quite funny. It just wasn't really, it was kind of like, um, who well, what's it on our show? Who chooses it again? Well, we do it as a kind of team decision. Mm. Really, it's good to take now one I'm having final say. Because, yeah. you know, a lot of the time they, they choose you. A lot of times people aren't available who you want or won't do it, you know, and so you just don't have that much. Have you ever had to that you really did not want on that? No, none that I really didn't want, but a lot of times I felt dodgy about. And normally I felt dodgy about it because we haven't had the preparation time. I actually think deep down that if you've got the time to meet someone and do it properly, you can work it out. And often I meet a guest more than once if I'm not right about it, if I can. But like this week, um, Berkhoff I didn't meet at all. We know I thought Berkhoff worked. But we had this cracking shout in the audience. And it was a very oh, nice yeah. shout. Some things went wrong and finally were brilliant. Um, and I need to write it, I'd met like a quarter of an hour Thursday night, we already had a book, all the questions were written, you know, all the ideas were put out, so I didn't really have enough input on that. I think it really shows, when I don't have input on something, it really shows. I'm not being egotistical, but I think it's probably because I'm not professional enough yet to be able to do things that are given to me. I'm not like Mike Smith. Mike Smith, you can give him a sheet of paper, and he'll go out there and do his job. Me, I have to really care about it if I can do it. You know, cause, uh, have you ever had any guests that have made it sort of obvious they didn't really want to be on there and they never... Uh, to, um, to to no, we've been very lucky, but I'm going to say, can you plug something? And I don't mind plugging. I mean, I think, because you've got to be realistic about it. This virus, I was awful, it was like a fucking sort of excuse me. <laughs> like a solid plug. And that was unintentional, I don't know that. I think that was just because I'm I mean, it was also the worst time, it was my worst presentation job this Friday as well. I think you look at, I was looking at it, I only watched it once, that's all I could bear. And it looked like I wasn't holding it together. It looked like I wasn't, I wasn't sure about it. I don't know why that was a thing like that. But, um, 
No, like this Brian came on, who I thought was really good fun. And he said, Are you getting a plug, my single? And I said, For you, good one, sir. And it's like, We're going to try to stick it in. You know, but you've got to realise that that guy's been thrown over from America to do publicity for his single. So we wouldn't get him if he wasn't there. So, and I'd like him back again one day because it was funny. So you have to, it's kind of you scratch my back, I'll scratch your situation. You have to be realistic. Yeah. But when Morgan started his three nights a week thing, I remember reading quite said, We won't have anyone on plugging. It's a really unrealistic attitude to take because you're going to run out of people. There aren't enough celebrities or interesting people in this country to fill three nights a week who haven't got. But by the law of averages, one of them's going to have a book out, you know, eventually. And they're going to want to talk about it. And often, in terms of plugging, what that person's, why the, the reason you've got that person on the show is to do something that's out at the moment. Like Tracy Johns, who wasn't a particularly interesting interview, my fault, not hers. Um, she was worth talking to because she's got a fan out at the moment. So it's like, it's an odd situation, you know, you are plugging the movie. Jesus, what's happened to the National Health Service in this country? 
you know, what's happened to the education system? What's happened to the unemployment benefit system? You know, what's going to happen in a few years' time? Why are we still got, um, you know, why are we still treating one of the uh, most powerful but badly run countries in the world as our ally? You know, is, uh, and why do we still have such a ridiculous, dogmatic, but um, unrealistic attitude towards Soviet Russia? You know, so I wonder about all these things. And you try and balance it up, you know, you've got your personal view and you've got your, your, your country's view and your world view. Take into account, and at the moment I just don't have the time for any of them. So I'm cropping out, basically. But well, I suppose I'm leftist. Mm. Leftish. What well, kind of did you work in both? Well, at the moment I do a lot. I mean, I'm in every day. I write a lot of the ideas in the show. A lot of comedy ideas, book short films, and I meet the guests and research a lot of the guests. That's basically it. So I'm involved in the meeting and I say yes or no to people. I mean, normally the way the structure that we this will come in, we'll have a meeting every morning at 10. And we'll go through who are on offer for this week and I'll say yes or no and then we'll go further with it. We'll then try and run through a list of new possibilities and I'll say yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. You have to kind of weed some people out front. Say someone says to me, the guest will not even mildly interested in You might as well get them out of the way then. You know, you must as well just say no. Um, because it's just wasting time, we haven't got the resources, we've only got a couple of weeks, we haven't got the time or the money to spend meeting everyone who might be available for the show. So you have to say you have to go on instinct. And then, but I'm always up to persuasion. If someone says to me, this person is good, and I say, well, I don't know the word, and well, I don't like the idea, I say, but it should be really good, I say, well, go and meet her. <laughs> you know, and we'll do it that way. Um, so, and also then, we'll have a comedy meeting, there's a guy who writes over here, there's Alan and Graham. Alan's his social producer, Graham's a researcher, books all the bands, and also writes a lot of ideas. Or someone's going down to the pub without a coffee shop, or sit down and write for an hour, so come up with ludicrous ideas, like this week we got stars who look like they're dogs, you know. We're just going to make a photo of the evening ones and be photographed with the same person. I want to do pop stars who look like vegetables, because I still think Jimmy Somerville looks something like a potato, so I'm sure. Yeah, and we're going to hold up a potato and say. Yeah, he's not. I'm not such a. Um, I haven't really got any though. Like, loads of yeah, like, at the moment. What are this at the moment? I've got the soundtrack from She's Got a Habit, the movie, it's really nice, Jazz soundtrack. I've got this new kind of Prince based album called Madhouse 8, it's really nice. Um, I bought a couple of Prince albums the other day, the new She Louis album, because I like the Prince sort of sound. I listen to a lot of movie soundtracks, any other way coming, I like a lot. Um, Tom Jones, I've got Tom Jones out there, some cracking stuff. It's not unusual, well, to me, what he's going to do this out a few weeks, man. I'm going to try and get him to think it's not unusual with me. He seems to be hip for us. I like Cameo, I like um, Smokey Wombs and the Miracles, I think Peter's an ecstasy, uh, <laughs> I like lots of stuff. I'm not, I'm not so big on pop stuff, I'm more kind of soul and 60s music, and uh, I, like, I quite like Tamar Motown. Tamar Motown, I'm not, uh, I'm not big on heavy metal, I quite like some glam bands, I quite like old Alice Cooper stuff, that's fun. Diggy Pop, I like Dave Bowie, Brian Ferry, Roxy Music, uh, Luther Vandals, I like a lot. Have you got any, um, I guess you from particular areas that you wouldn't have on? Well, I've steered the politics in the show, basically because it's a lightweight show and I don't, uh, it's an important issue and I don't mean like trivialising it. I mean, if you've got someone on, A, you're giving them a, a soapbox to, to either further their own career or that of their party, which is part of my political leaders and it's an unfair thing to do. I don't want this country to turn out like America, where you see every other chat show, you see a politician plugging their party. And, uh, and also, I think a lot of the more serious issues, by appearing on our show, we would trivialise them to such an extent that it would then make it worth, worthless. They appear. So, you know, it's like there's someone who's, there's an age victim who's going to be a good talker, this woman is an age victim, and Terry Wogan's trying to get so she said, no, she doesn't like Wogan, but she'd do our show because she thinks I handle things sensitively. And I don't know whether I'd want her on the show, not because I don't think it's a brilliant, it would be brilliant television probably, but it's like, A, I'm a bit unsure about that kind of voyeuristic attitude of TV, and B, I don't want it to, you know, how do you do that? You go from Mr. Wacky Pop personality to a person with age to, I don't mean anything when I point it to a train spinner. You know, it's what, what is what? Going on there? John, sorry, just a second. Okay, we're just wrapping up now. Alright. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I don't want to trivialise it to, to an extent, so I'm very dupe those kind of things. Otherwise, I'm up for anyone. It should be really, on our show, we should be out into a different angle for everyone. You should be out involved. If someone wants to do the show and they want to do it, they, they like the idea, then they will be joining the fun and they'll be worth having on. Okay, um. What's your favourite film of all time? My favourite film of all time? I don't know, but I like, I'm quite sentimental. So I like films like, have you seen um, uh, It's a Wonderful Life? There was a Frank Capra movie with James Stewart, where he says, I wish I'd never been born. And then this, this, this angel from in heaven 
he's like, well, Clarence throws him on his wings and says, OK, we'll make it like you've never been born. And he walks around the town and everyone's unhappy and all the good things done in life didn't happen. So the town's all full. And he's, the woman he married is actually an old, unhappy spinster. And he's all heartbroken. He's such a sad one. And then he finds his little baby daughter's petals from the flowers. And he goes, that's his petals. You know how James Stewart voice goes, well, my name's James Stewart. He goes, that's his petals, that's his petals. And he comes back to reality. Great film. I like, um, well, I like, I like Michael Caine movies, early Michael Caine movies from the 60s. I like Fellini's Eight and a Half, one of my favourite films. It's a wonderful, it's a mad, 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 mad world. It's a brilliant film, very funny comedy. Um, I like the work of David Lynch. I like horror movies a lot, Spratter movies, you know, those really over the top. Fly's good in there, have you seen that? That's good from Gun City, like, eat first. Um, I like Crown of God movies. I like horror films again. Have you tried? No, I've had them twice. I was about two years ago, almost ran over some old ladies and I found them. See, I wonder. <laughs> what's she doing on the pavement here? <laughs> <laughs> Have you got any um, filthy habits? Filthy habits? Um, yes. What? I'm not telling you. <laughs> no, I don't have anything filthy habits. Um, no, not really. Oh, I did do it. I just remember after my bath is they cut my toenails and didn't clean it up. So they put them in the floor in the front room or something. That's very filthy. But um, nothing, nothing printable. You wear a No, but I like, I've got a few different half shades in life. I've got, um, I like Armani's nice. And Versace's my favourite. That's a really nice half shade. Um, I've got a pack of a band that's quite nice. Do you like the idea of coming to Texas? Um, I don't know, ask me what I am, I know. <laughs> no, I don't know, I think it's, I don't really like the idea of you coming to Texas. I don't know, if I was to become a Texan, I'd be sexy, or I wouldn't think it would happen, really. Not that I keep singing anyway, but, um, <laughs> no, I don't know, I wouldn't be like, I'd 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 be I don't mean I can't say hey sex and all the people come up and start talking about the show in the street and you think, well, it's, it's a very strange feeling because you know it's what you're doing and you know they've seen you doing it, but you can't really relate to the fact they want to talk to you about it. You know, it's, uh, it's uh, a much bigger trick that someone's asking you directions and spending a lot of time doing it. What do you see yourself doing in 10 years' time? Being 36. <laughs> no, I don't even know. I wouldn't be doing The Last Resort then. And I think we might do another series and I won't do any more because uh, I don't get boring. Mm. And it might be pretty cool for the second series, even which would be a real shame, because I think it's fun at the moment, it's fun to do, and I think it's fun to watch. So I wouldn't mind doing it if we change it slightly, but I wouldn't do any more than that. I've no idea, I mean, in a way, my decision's been made for me, because I've become a presenter now, despite the fact that I never really intended to be one, but I never had any set idea of what I wanted to do. I didn't have a big ambition. So uh, I guess, I don't know, I've no idea. I mean, I'd like to be working in either TV or films in some way, maybe writing, maybe producing, maybe still presenting, if it was still fun. Because then it's a particularly shallow and superficial way of earning a living, so it's kind of... Unless I had real control and real input of what I was doing, like I've got at the moment, I would never want it just to job and present. I wouldn't want to just turn up and be given a script to read out and do it and go home. It wouldn't be satisfying. I'd rather like write to myself. Or yeah. Something. What do you see yourself doing in 10 years' time? Oh, God. Um, I won't mind. I won't mind your job. But... You can have it, thank you. <laughs> Give you some signed photos if you want. Oh, yeah, there you go.